мандрал хот бол үнэхээр сайхан хот байна. Ямар ч гэсэн өдр нададаа ол мандрал гэдэг өшөн мандрал нь их таалагдсан. I came to Montreal with my husband in the winter of 1995. I saw this landscape covered with snow, but then summer came and I loved it. It was so beautiful. I really love Montreal very much. This is a um, unique city. People here, they are, they are very friendly and warm. Uh, my career is begin from Montreal. Montreal has beautiful architecture, and uh, um, and there are lots of artists from uh, different traditions. When I first came to Montreal as a child, I felt there was this, this was a very unique place. There's something about that Montreal in particular. Artists thrive here. There's a lot of, there are a lot of things going on as far as arts are concerned. The way things turned out in, in history and uh, culturally, this is a francophone, anglophone community that is unique. There is uh, nothing like this in all of the Americas. Uh, this creates a special kind of energy. It's got so many cultures here involved and that create a unique blend of things that are only possible here. And uh, Montreal, of course, is a place where all those different cultures meet. And I think this project that we're doing is, to an extent, representative of what can happen here. Along some project, uh, I'm finding myself in uncharted territory, and this is for me an adventure. So I'm 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 doing this in order to learn about myself and mostly about the long song and how to uh, incorporate my instrument and my musical experience. Well, so far we had just one short rehearsal, and um, right now it's hard to tell uh, which way it's going to go, because for me it's very important uh, to make Zola feel comfortable. Because basically she's not really, she's not changing anything about her singing. So she needs to feel connected to her tradition. She shouldn't be disrupted by, by what I'm doing, or at least not too much. Taking some breath? <laughs> I think I'm there also as a disturbance, and I think I, I need to disturb a little bit. So as to integrate the cello in such a way that still makes it sound like a cello. And uh, for example, the, the, the cello register, you know, it's got a huge range, and I think this is one of the aspects that can be exploited. Of course, it just follows very faithfully what the voice does. It's basically unison, more or less synchronized. It can be, I think, it doesn't need to be all synchronized, but it, it, it's basically um, parallel. But the, with the cello, you can go one octave lower, two octaves lower, for me, I think it's a very humbling experience because here I am with all this baggage and uh, of uh, playing all this Western repertoire and uh, not knowing very much about long song. And uh, this is wonderful because I just have to use my ears. My part is perhaps not as demanding technically, but it's very demanding uh, in terms of style. And uh, I don't really know what it will give it in the end. But it has this affinity with chamber music, and in, in, in chamber music, two, three, four, five more people, uh, we communicate among uh, ourselves, but we also communicate with the audience. So there's this sort of triangle going on, composer, performer, audience, and it goes every which way, and uh, uh, wonderful things start happening when all the channels are open. Art 
is there to depict the human experience. And um, our personal experience can tie into enriching that. And it just inevitably becomes part of what we do as an artist. For example, when, when I was 12 years old, just before we left Russia, my, my brother, who was uh, eight years older than I, uh, died accidentally. And uh, that was a very, very tragic thing, of course. And this is one of those pushes that life give, gave me, uh, where I just put this extra energy into music, because I needed to express this um, pain in this instance. Um, uh, for example, I was playing a piece that was fairly intense, and I think the, the day I learned that my, my brother died, I just pledged that uh, I was going to put this experience into this music. And whenever I had um, something that could convey this kind of emotion, that I would, I would use that. And I think those, those things are very important in order to stay true, in, uh, you know, to, to find the right tone when you're, when you're working on things. Of course, there are much lighter things in music as well. For example, when I, when I had my children, this is something that, of course, brought a great deal of chaos in my life, but also, um, for example, I, the, the playfulness that, that, that one gets from um, learning how to be with children. I just Actually, all the, all the things that I've missed in my childhood when I was practicing so hard, I'm learning um, since a few years. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm compensating now with my kids. And I think this is also ultimately reflected in, in, in my music. Uh, this is unique because uh, this is going to be using three voices, three musicians who have never worked together, um, three of us together. I've worked with Liu Fang before, but not with Zola. And um, for instance, for myself, I'm using written music. Of course, I'll be changing some things here and there. Perhaps uh, Michael or Sally will 